Okay, moving on to the next team in the Pac-12 that I will be going over today. And this is going to surprise a lot of people considering this team is a team that really most people, including the media, have winning the Pac-12. And that would actually be Dana Altman and his Oregon Ducks. And I feel like with Oregon, this is going to be a very interesting team because I feel like these are one of the teams in college basketball where I am much more low on them compared to everyone else. And not a lot of people are as low on Oregon as I am. So I'm going to explain to you why I'm not a huge fan of this Oregon team. So last year, Oregon had a really good team. They had a core of Peyton Pritchard, Anthony Mathis, Shakar Justin, Francis Okoro, CJ Walker, and the group of guys that they return this year, Will Richardson, Chris Duarte, and Folly Dante, Addison Patterson, Chandler Lawson. So there were a lot of guys on this Oregon team that are going to be a returning member of last year's squad. And it's funny because Oregon last year, going into the season, I was very high on them. I believe I picked them to win the Pac-12. They brought back a guy in Peyton Pritchard who, I'll admit, was one of the best players in college basketball last year. Oregon played in so many close games, and I loved what Peyton Pritchard was able to do in crunch time down the stretch. I feel like he always had his team in a position to win weight in games because of just crazy clutch shots he was able to make. So him not being there for Oregon anymore is a huge, huge loss because Peyton Pritchard, this guy was just unbelievable last year. Not only did he play in the Final Four as a freshman, but just the amount of big game experience was just insane. He stands with what he did last year, man, 21 points per game, six assists per game, four rebounds per game, and two steals per game. That doesn't hold a candle to his intangible value as a vocal leader, offensive initiator, and a late game safety valve. And let me tell you, he bailed out Oregon in every close game last year and now they're going to be bringing in will richardson to be their starting point guard the 65 junior he averaged 11 points 3.7 rebounds and 2.3 assists per game last year uh as that secondary ball handler to peyton pritchard they also bring back chris duarte i think this guy's pretty good he's a 6'6 senior 13 points a game, 6 rebounds per game last year. He was a sneaky NBA prospect right now. He's getting some buzz for the 2021 NBA draft in that second round. And I do think that with those two guys, that's a really good start if you're Dana Altman. Here's the problem, though. I think last year, Oregon, one of the main reasons why they weren't that good was because Dana Altman had a hard time establishing his rotation and roles for each of his players. And if you listen to the show, when it comes to college basketball, you guys know that one of the main, main features that I look in for teams that I think could possibly have a chance to be really good is that team dy- dynamic and that chemistry and that no, and then and the, the awareness of roles, I should say. I feel like in order for a team to be successful, everyone needs to know their role and everyone needs to establish and execute that role. And I feel like with Oregon last year, that was something that, to be honest, they just were not able to do at all. And last year, you look at Oregon on paper as a whole and you say, yeah, they were a pretty good team. They finished 24 and 7, 13 and 5 in the Pac-12, basically won the league. Pretty good job. But at the same time, if you look at Oregon a little closer, closer, Peyton Pritchard was just ridiculous. This guy had 29 in a win against Stanford, 23 in a win against uh, Oregon State, 38 in a game against Arizona. And if you're an Oregon fan or if you're an Arizona fan that is listening to this show, you definitely remember that game. Peyton Pritchard just went bonkers in that crazy game in overtime. I believe Nico Mannion and Josh Smith actually missed some uh, free throws down the stretch, and that's actually how uh, Oregon, the Ducks, ended up winning that game. But that game was just absolutely bonkers. And I do think that this year, I don't know if there's going to be a Peyton Pritchard on this Oregon team to bail them out. And last year, notice with Oregon, even though they clearly had a star player in Peyton Pritchard that would do everything for them as the starting point guard, they didn't have anyone else on that team really with an established role between Duarte and Will Richardson and Patterson and Lawson and Anthony Mathis and Jakar Justin and Francis Okoro. I feel like there were no real roles to be found on the Oregon team last year. And I do think in order for this year's Oregon team to be successful, 
They're going to need, okay, Will Richardson, you're going to be our lead ball handler. Chris Duarte, you're going to be our lead creator. And Fali Dante, is he going to be your main big man? Because last year, he had some trouble with his consistency. I feel like he was never really locked in to be that big man that a lot of Oregon fans expected him to be as a top 10 recruit. But at the same time, there are a lot of people that are buying some Enfali Dante stock right now. And to be honest, from what I saw last year... There was never really a moment where I watched him and I was like, wow, that kid is going to be a star next year. I'm really keeping my eye out for him. I did that with Will Richardson last year and even during his freshman year. I've done that with Chris Duarte before. I've done that with plenty of other big men around college basketball before. And uh, yeah, it didn't happen with Enfali Dante last year. Now, I'm not saying he can't be good, but I'm just going to need to see a little more until I'm penciling him in to be one of the better big men in the Pac-12 like <clears throat> excuse me, a lot of other people are doing. Oregon also brings in three transfers from the grad transfer market. One is uh, Eric Williams Jr. Actually, these are not grad transfers. They're sit-out transfers. Both of these guys sat last year. Uh, Eric Williams from Duquesne, 14 points, 7 rebounds, and about an assist per game with the Dukes two seasons ago in 18-19. And I do think Eric Williams could be a contributor for this Oregon team. But once again, my question is, can he find a role with this Oregon team? And... Eugene Omarui, the transfer from Rutgers, a guy that is very experienced playing college basketball. He was pretty solid in the Big Ten, has pr uh, proved that he could produce uh, in college basketball in the Power Five level. And I feel like when you look at Omarui and Williams, they're kind of similar players, kind of tweeners, and that's multi-positional, versatile players that could really play and could play physical. And I'm curious to see if the spacing for Oregon is still there from with those guys playing. But here's the other thing when I look at the Oregon Ducks, right? Last year, Oregon lost to Washington State on the road. Oregon lost to Oregon State on the road. And they only beat Cal by five. They lost to Arizona State. That game against Arizona, I believe they had no business winning. And I feel like last year, there were plenty of times, even in wins, when I watched Oregon and I was just like, are we sure this team is good? Because I don't know if they are. And I do think Dana Altman is a really good basketball coach. I loved what he was able to do bringing the 2017 Ducks to the Final Four. That's really, to be honest with you, one of my favorite college teams of all time with Dylan Brooks and uh, Chris uh, Boucher and Tyler Dorsey and a freshman Preyton Pritchard. That was a very fun Oregon team to watch. But really since then, I feel like Dana Altman has struggled a little bit in terms of the talent he's been able to bring in. And what I mean by that is, yes, he's been able to bring in plenty of talent, but at the same time, I don't don't think he's really recruited guys that are suited to play with each other and I feel like last year that's what Oregon really struggled with that we had so many talented guys that just didn't know a role and I feel like in the locker room things probably weren't that pretty either and if I'm an Oregon Duck fan a lot of people's expectations for my squad this year are win the Pac-12 you're the most talented team in the league but at the same time I don't necessarily know if I'm willing to say that comfortably because I think Arizona State is super talented I think they're a top 15 team in college basketball I could say the same thing about UCLA I mean everyone talks about how good Oregon is does no one remember UCLA closed the season out with six straight wins to end last season I mean that's something that I don't think enough people are talking about. And to be honest, UCLA basically returns everyone. I'm not sure why everyone is penciling in Oregon to be better than them when UCLA, they return their whole team. Everyone knows their roles. And Oregon, I can't tell you what exactly I think Enfali Dante is going to be this season. I can't really tell you what exactly I expect Amori Hardy, the transfer from UNLV. He's another guy that I feel like is going to come in right away and he's going to say, all right, playing in the Pac-12 compared to the Mountain West, that may be a little bit of an adjustment for him. Plus, I've kind of heard that he likes to shoot the ball a lot and he's a guy that did average 14.5 uh, points per game at UNLV. So he is a guy that kind of has that uh, history and he's used to really shooting and taking a lot of shots. I'm not really sure if uh, this offense with Dana Altman is really going to be the place for him to do that. And then the same thing can be said about LJ Figueroa, the transfer from St. John's. Now, I really liked Figueroa as a player when he was at third role and that third leading score behind uh, Shamori Pons and Mustafa Heron during uh, his days at St. John's. But at the same time, Figueroa is really good. I think 
If you play a lineup of Richardson, Duarte, Figueroa, Omari, and Dante, that's a really good starting five. I'm just not sure if it fits well together because last year I just saw this story happen, right? I saw a Dana Altman Oregon Ducks team that looked really good on paper and unfortunately no one really knew their role the chemistry was never there and even though they were good they were a tournament team there was never a time where I watched Oregon and I was just like all right I think they're going to the final four the same thing could be said about the Oregon team two years ago by the way people forget about that team and I know that obviously feels like a really long time ago but if you remember two years ago for Oregon Bull Bull gets hurt early in the season and really they weren't good pre bulbul injury and they weren't that good post bulbul injury until louis king got back and is until time went on and on and on and oregon really under the lead of peyton pritchard was able to work on their chemistry and improve that aspect and they actually went all the way to the sweet 16 that year they ended up losing to virginia but i think in order for this oregon team to succeed that's what i think they're going to need to do they're going to need to be like that 27 or the 2018 2019 oregon ducks really work on their chemistry and use that as their top priority because there is enough talent on this team to be a really good top 10 top 5 ish team but until dana altman shows me that he could navigate the chemistry with these guys and everyone knows their role i don't feel that comfortable putting oregon that high so for now they are my fourth team in the pac-12